Hi everyone, welcome back to another gameplay of Genshin Impact. 3.1 version is finally live and uh, with it two new characters have been released, uh, Sino and Candace. So in this video I'm going to show you guys my personal thoughts and impressions, overall game style, talents, all that about these two new characters and I'm going to give you guys my thoughts about, about them, what I think, uh, if they're worth or not, you know, to, to pull on the new banner. So uh, first covering Sino, he's uh, the five star. He's gonna be an Electro uh, Polearm user. He has his own dedicated weapon that you can find in the weapons banner, um, uh, his five star weapon, right? Has crit rate, a subset, so already very, very nice, and increases attack by the amount of ele elemental mastery. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's just nice. Artifacts, in this case for the trial version, he has the four piece Guild of Dreams, Increases elemental mastery and then increasing attack or elemental mastery depending on the uh, on your party elements. And now let's take a look at the talents. So normal attacks is going to have a four hit combo, um, and uh, uh, this is how it looks like. So he's very very cool as well. The uh, the the visuals, you know, the art, all that, super super nice. He's based, I think, on like the pantheon god from Egypt, like Anubi, Anubis. Uh, so yeah, it's nice. So first attack, second, third, and four. So that's the four hit combo. All right, that's it. Charge attack is gonna just dash forward like uh, Kutao, like Rosaria, like many others. And then the plunge attack once again, doing always physical uh, damage. Moving on to the skill, is gonna very simply just uh, swift uh, like thrust forward doing electro damage to opponents along the path and it's very very simple it looks like right you can also use it to like get away from opponents to damage enemies and if the enemies are close enough you can damage multiple enemies and that's just it now this skill uh changes appearance and changes as well damage if you use it when you have the passive from the burst activated and you can see that it's going to be called mortary right uh, it's going to do AoE electro damage, and uh, also when you use the skill, uh, it's going to extend the duration of the burst passive. So in order to understand well how this works, of course, we're going to have to go into the burst. Now the burst is uh, very singular because it's like a mix between Radiant Shogun and Razor burst, uh, and I think it looks super, super awesome. Uh, now he's going to gain this Pax Worn uh, Path Clearer, passive so the burst upon activation it deals no damage uh, now when you activate it all right he's gonna start attacking with this massive electro claws um, pretty much like a wolf uh, and uh, his normal charge and plunging attacks are all gonna be converted to electro that cannot be overridden uh, and uh, uh, he's gonna gain elemental mastery he's gonna increase the resistance to interruption and is immune to electro charge during the duration. Of course, the effect will be cancelled if you switch characters. So if he leaves the field, and can last a maximum of 18 seconds. So it has a very, very long duration. Now the uh, the actual hit combo, you can see that it's all different. So it's going to have a five hit combo with the class, and the actual percentages, as you can see here, are pretty high. Like all the talents here are level eight. And, but you can see the difference like between the his normal attack combo, right? The percentages, and then the percentages from the burst. Like it's 1.6 to 1.7 times higher. So it's very, very nice. And now this is the amount of elemental mastery that he gains, 100. The basic duration is 10 seconds. And uh, uh, now, but you could see there that the maximum duration is 18. And that's because if we go back to the skill, using the skill after you use the burst, increases the duration of the burst by four seconds see so if you can just use the skill two times the like the enhanced skill two times after the burst you can already give those extra eight seconds to reach the 18 and the total cooldown of the burst is 20 seconds so that means you only have like two seconds you need to wait until you have you can use the burst again so it's super super strong uh energy cost is going to be 80 so pretty high uh but the fact that he's gonna apply Electro with his basic attacks, uh, you can create a ton of reactions, particles. It shouldn't be that hard to 
uh, generate enough particles to get the energy and the bar full again to use the burst right away. Uh, maybe, maybe just 20% uh, energy recharge could be nice, but, uh, but yeah, that's it. And now if we go back to the skill, you can see that if you use the skill on after you use the burst, so in this enhanced effect, it's going to do more damage. And the cooldown as well, it's more than halved. And uh, it's very, very low cooldown. So you can use the skill like permanently. During the duration of the burst, it's like 18 seconds maximum. You can use the skill up to six times on this you know, lower cooldown. So it's super, super nice. Um, now, before going into the battle, I just want to cover here the last uh, talents. So the first passive talent, the first passive talent unlocked at Ascension 1. When you have the uh, the effect from the burst, right? You're going to gain this answer stance at intervals. I think it's one every like two to three se seconds, uh, maybe every three or four. I'm not sure. And now when you have this stance and you activate the skill, you're going to activate this judication effect, which increases the damage of the skill by 35%. And it fires these three bolts that are going to be like claws that are going to just fly forward, all right, that deal 100% of Sinos' attack as electro damage. And the damage from these bolts are considered um, skill damage. Uh, and uh, now this ends your stance is actually very easy to spot because uh, you're going to see this huge like eye appearing right here, uh, very, very large. And so if you have the eye appearing and then use the skill, right, you're going to be able to proc this um, uh, this first passive talent, you know, this additional damage with the skill plus these three additional bolts. Second uh, passive talent unlocked at the session four, his damage is increased by the amount of elemental mastery. So he, the normal attack damage that he deals with this burst active is increased by 150% of elemental mastery. And the Dust uh, Stalker Bolt from the first passive talent, so it's this one right here, it incre is increased by 250% of his elemental mastery. So uh, in this case, for example, you can see that for the third version, he has 371 elemental mastery, which is not uh, super high, but at the same time, it allows you to build like attack, to build like uh, crit rate, crit damage. So it's not just focusing on like an elemental mastery. And uh, yeah, so you can have even more more damage coming from the kit. Last passive talent is uh, gonna give 25% more rewards when you dispatch him on Sumeru for 20 hours. And that's it. So let's take a look at this character in action because I think it's just uh, uh, the best thing to do. So that's the skill, right? So if opponents are close enough, you can hit multiple of them with a single skill and uh, you can just dash uh, forward, right? Like this. So I want to just use it one more time. Oops, not bad. Alright, I should get enough to use my, my burst now. Yeah, here we go. And now look at the burst, guys. So it transforms into like full Anubis. And uh, you can see the either, that's the ends your stance. So if you use the skill when you have that eye appearing, your skill is enhanced. And you can see as well the thunderbolts firing towards the front. See, one, two, and three. And uh, and that's it. So here, I think the game locked off because I I was too I had the trial version open too much. Uh, but that's uh, that's Sino. And uh, in my opinion, like he looks super super good, super super nice. Uh, main DPS. You know, there are many electro characters main DPS, but. If you like his game style, like a lot, I like a lot the fact that it goes like melee form with the claws. Um, very nice interaction with the skill. He, in my opinion, like if you build him correctly, even without his future weapon, he can really do a ton of damage. And with the correct team, you're gonna need just a team that like applies uh, the buffs him right with either elemental mastery, the buffs the attack that can buff him to create energy. Sorry, elemental reactions is gonna be super super strong. So. Uh, I strongly recommend you to pull for him if you if you can, you know, and if you have enough privileges and if you like him. Now I'm gonna just take a very quick look at the constellations just because they're there, 
And uh, uh, of course, if you are a free-to-play player like myself, uh, you might not be able to unlock even the first constellation. But uh, yeah, let's just, let's just cover them to fully complete the character. C1. When you use the burst, uh, he's going to gain 20% attack speed. So his normal attack speed is increased by 20% for 10 seconds. And if you proc the adjudication effect from his first passive talent, you can increase it. Actually, you can refresh the duration. So that means that you can have this additional attack speed uh, for the full 18 seconds duration of the burst. Um, and uh, of course, remember, more attack speed means being able to attack more and so doing more damage in the same amount of time. So, of course, very, very nice. And you can see that the adjudication effect does grow very easy to proc because the eye, like the eye that activates the ends your stance, is very easy to spot. So just save your skill so that then you can activate it when you see the eye and that's it. C2, when his normal attacks hit opponents, his electro damage bonus is increased by 10% for 4 seconds. You can trigger it every 0.51 second and you can have a maximum of 5 stacks. Now, in my opinion, this is his best constellation, like even better than the, his uh, C6, because you can have a maximum of 50% electro damage bonus. So damage coming from his burst, from the skill, from everything is increased. Uh, and you can proc it very easily because you just need to activate the burst and to hit your normal attacks like five times and then that's it. That's the extra 50% damage. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so it's just uh, super nice and you can have it permanently active as your burst duration. So yeah, uh, very, very strong. C3 increases the level of the burst, which is pretty interesting. C4, once again, when you activate the burst and then you trigger any reaction with uh, Electro and another element, he's going to regenerate three elemental energy for all party members, ex ex excluding himself. So this unfortunately cannot help you to regenerate energy for Sino itself, but still, it can be nice because you can proc up to five times. So it's a maximum of 15 elemental energy uh, for your party members. So that makes rotations even easier. C5, increasing the level of the skill, and then finally C6. Again, very long description, but at the end of the day, he gains this additional uh, passive called Day of the Jackal every time they use the burst or you trigger the adjudication effect. And you have up to a maximum of eight stacks. This passive lasts for eight seconds. Um, and uh, you like fire one additional, uh, you consume one stack to fire one of the dust stalker bolts that he, they're always the same from the first passive talent, right? So that's just it. Uh, you can proc, you can activate one of these bolts every 0 0.4 seconds. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it. So in my opinion, like his best constellations are actually C1, more attack speed for a very long time, full 18 seconds, and his C2 especially. I think these two are his best constellations. And uh, that's it. So that's my idea, guys. That's my opinion on this new character. Uh, I'm gonna personally try to pull for him, uh, but now I just want to cover the uh, second card that has been released, that is Candace. That is gonna be uh, this one right here. And uh, now Candace is gonna once again have the same outfit and based on the same kind of mythology of uh, Sino. He's, she's very cool because she has like the eyes, see, are different color. Uh, so yeah, very, very cool. And now she's going to be a four-star Hydro Polearm user. And so it's the very first Polearm Hydro character that, you ha that we have in, uh, in the game. Uh, and uh, of course, being a four-star means that it's very more likely that you're going to be able to get there from the banner. So if you just like a little bit of her game style, or if you just want to add it to your roster, you never know in the future if you might use her. I recommend you to, uh, again, pull for her just to unlock her. And in this case, for the trial version, she has the catch, which is the weapon you get from fishing. She has a two-piece tenacity and two-piece emblem. Um, and then these are her talents. So, uh, normal attack is going to have a four-hit combo, like Sino. But you can see that her base attack is a lot higher, like compared to Sino, at least. And that this is how it looks like. So, one, two, with the shield three hitting twice and then fourth now her animations of the normal attacks 
um, are so cool. Like, see here the bashing of the shield, and then look here the fourth attack. She actually gets the spear from their le from her left arm, and then she throws it with her left arm. So, uh, yeah, it's just super super cool animation. Like, I just love it just from the animation. <laughs> And uh, now moving on to the skill. She's gonna have two different effects if you tap it or if you hold it. Now if you tap it, she's gonna just rush forward doing 100 damage to opponents in front. If you hold it, she's gonna have these two different uh, kind of activations. Uh, the first one is that she's gonna block incoming damage and this barrier can absorb uh, based, on, based on her maximum HP. And uh, this barrier can last until the elemental scale is unleashed or until the duration ends. And now if you hold longer and long enough, you're going to activate this second stance in which after she finishes charging, she's going to do this AOE hydro damage in front of her. Uh, so this leaping strike. Uh, and that's it. So either when your shield is broke, when the duration ends, and um, or when you decide, right? Uh, you're gonna do this additional uh, charge at damage. So you can see that the basic damage is based on her HP, which is very nice because you don't need to build damage to do damage with the skill. And as well, the charge uh, damage is gonna be even higher percentage of your HP. The cooldown is different. If you just press it, it's six seconds. If you hold it, it's nine seconds. And this is how it looks like. So just press it, boom, right? Just dash forward with the shield, always with the left arm. Uh, and that's it. Now, if you hold it, if you don't hold it enough, she always, she's still gonna do the same as if you press it. So if you press it, or if you hold it not long enough, it's the same. Now you can see here what happens if you hold it longer. She has this extra stance, right? You can also move. So if you, you can parry opponents coming from different directions, if you keep on holding it, and you can just hold it until the end of the duration, right? Or you can also release it sooner and she, do, she does the uh, hydro damage at the end. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, uh, the skill. And now moving on to the burst. Um, when you activate it, she's gonna do AOE hydro damage based on her maximum HP. And then she's gonna confer this passive called Prayer of the Crimson Crown on the active character. So it could be her or it could be any of your party. Now the, this passive procs this, has these properties. The active character is going to deal elemental damage with the normal attacks. When the character takes the field, so when you change characters, they will unleash. So the very first time that you do it, they're going to unleash this way of water, doing 100 damage to nearby opponents. So you can proc it up to three times, right? Because you have three more characters, a maximum of three more characters other than Candace on, the, uh, on your party. And you can see the Sword, Claymore, and Porum wielding. Uh, characters will obtain a hydro infusion for the duration and that's how you can see that the uh, normal attacks are going to do additional elemental damage right because they damage if they have a sword claim or a pole arm uh, it's turned into hydro now of course it doesn't apply to catalysts and it doesn't apply to uh, bow users and you can find right here the percentages once again the skill damage when you activate it the duration nine seconds the damage bonus of the like the additional elemental damage from the basic attacks the wave impact when you change characters right you can see you can proc it up to three times and the cooldown is 15 seconds energy cost is very low though it's 60. so that means that like in this six seconds period that you need to wait when the burst ends until you can use it again you should be able to recharge it Unfortunately, though, it's not so easy to proc a lot of particles with her. So even if it's the energy cost is very low, you're going to still need some additional either reactions of your team or like some more energy recharge to be able to fully, uh, like to have it permanently up, right? And now moving on to the passive talents. The first one, when she's hit by an attack, when she's holding the skill, she's going to um automatically finish the skill so she's gonna already do the additional damage right the jumping damage at the end so that's just it uh second passive talent the card is affected by the passive of her burst right will deal 0.5 percent increased damage to opponents every 1000 points of candace max hp when 
Remember, only when they deal elemental damage. Uh, so this means that you either have like apply elemental damage with your normal attacks if you don't have like if you have a catalyst right user or you have to go like with a sword polearm or claymore so in that way you have the actual hydro infusion right and so you can proc this additional damage this every 1000 points on the startup version she has 37.5 thousand hp so that means that here is actually a um 37,000 37 times right so it's roughly 18 yeah 18.5 18 percent increased damage um with uh with the normal attacks right when you do elemental damage so that you can proc already just in the astral version and then finally final passive talent she just uh, consumes less stamina when uh you're sprinting um Oh, sorry, climbing. He's climbing, not uh, sprinting, but climbing. And yeah, that's it. So, uh, looking at her in action, of course, being a four star, she's not uh, super strong. So I'm gonna show you here the the protection. Let's hope here that they attack. All right. Um, or you can just bash them, right? Like this. Boom bash in the front now the cool thing is that i think her second attack because it's just like it's a shield bash uh she can like add an interruption kind of uh, on the on the enemies so it's very nice the second hit of the combo see that it's like a shield bash so that's why it's nice and this is the burst right and you can see that the normal attacks are turning to elemental right and when you switch characters, you proc the that additional you know AOE um, of of water. I'm gonna use it again here so you can see. So that's one, two, and three. All right. So that's just the additional damage that you do when you change characters. Uh, and yeah, her damage. Well, in this case, for this version, is very little, so she doesn't really do that much damage. And you can see that the damage that she does when you have the burst active, right? Even Kaya, for example, here, see that the damage, even if you know it's increased by a lot, because it's uh, uh, increased by this uh, passive talent right here, is increased by here uh, this tw at least from 20%, you know, all that stuff. But unfortunately, it's still very little. You can see here that it's gonna be like when it's critting 2500, the last hit. Otherwise, it's it's around. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know exactly how much, but it's not really that much. So, yeah, uh, that's just it. She's pretty interesting, like in my opinion. Uh, I mean, uh, it's nice for the for the for the skill, but she's not going to be good as generating a lot of particles. Right. Uh, and uh, and as well, this additional uh, elemental damage with the normal attacks doesn't really seem to be that, that good. And as well, the hydro infusion um it's uh i don't know like it doesn't look like it deals that much damage right i could just show you here and you can see the damage even if percentagely it looks nice but at the end of the day it doesn't really uh do that much and now covering the constellations again and then i'm gonna just stop the video uh here's see one when you proc the um um this is sorry here i forgot i think it's the um the burst right yeah walk tail tie this is the burst so when you when you activate the passive from the burst the uh burst is actually increased by three seconds so you can make it last from nine seconds to 12 seconds so of course that makes it last longer so it's less cooldown that you like it's less time you need to wait until you can activate it again um then the uh, C2, when once again you use the skill in this case uh, and you hit opponents, her max HP is increased by 20% for 15 seconds. And of course, you can keep on refreshing it uh, if you use another skill. The cooldown, remember, the skill, it's uh, always no more than 9 seconds, even if you hold it. So that means that uh, you, can, uh, you can have this permanent extra 20% HP uh, always active. So it's just nice. C3 increasing the level of the burst. C4 is gonna reduce the hold, the cooldown of the skill, 
exactly to be the same as the tap cooldown. So that means that if you have RC4, uh, both press and holding are going to be 6 seconds, which of course is nice. So in that way you can have the additional damage when you hold it, but you don't have to wait that much. C5 increasing the level of the skill, and then finally C6. When the characters are going to be affected by her passive of the burst, right? Uh, ex excluding Candace herself, uh, and you'd proc this additional you know, elemental damage to opponents, an attack wave will be unleashed that's going to deal AoE, Hydro damage, equal to 15% of Candace max HP. So once again, it looks at first high like pretty nice percentages, but as I showed you before, they don't really do that much. That much. So I don't know if it is going to be like game changing, it's going to make her OP, or if it's not. And this effect can be triggered every 2.3 seconds. So it's very interesting, the the, the number here. It's 2.3, pretty weird. And it's considered elemental burst damage. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course, being a C, uh, four star character means that it's very likely that you might be able to pull uh, duplicates, right? And to be able to unlock more constellations. And that's it. So she looks awesome like in, in terms of animation like in my opinion she's uh, she has a super super cool animation but unfortunately her roll kit uh, doesn't really look that that great you know particles very easy to to get um and to generate the burst not really increasing that much the damage that you do she's not gonna heal um and uh yes she can parry with the with the skill but i don't know it doesn't look like it can really do that much compared to like other characters that we have. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So now at the very end of this video, I just wanted to exit here and I'm going to show you um, some of my pulls. I'm going to try to pull on the main banner. I don't really have that many primogens left because I tried to get as well from the last banner. I tried to get the, um, the Amos bow. And so I ended up like using some primogens so i have like around 7.5 yeah 7.6 my history here of characters i should have like 20 pulls already in something like that 20 or 30 let me just check here uh so it's five here 10 15 20 25 30 yeah 32 I have 32 uh, wishes in, so that means that if I can do other 40 wishes, I should be able to do with this amount of privileges. I should be able to at least get my chance of getting the, the, the five star. Of course, I got Kazuha on my very, la my very last five star was Kazuha, that was the featured character. So that means I have that the 50-50. But yeah, I'm gonna try it, why not? Because uh, I I like his game style a lot. And so I'm gonna just... Uh, go forward and uh, yeah, in the meantime you know I have the chance of getting Candace as well because she's a featured 4 star so yeah let's go so that's gonna be 32 42 and this is 52 pulls and now this is gonna be 62 so from this point on oh I got the 5 star already so that's uh, a little bit earlier uh, and let's see what I got so again it's 50 50 guys so I'm not really expecting that much oh I got him Woo! Nice. <laughs> okay, I got lucky. Um, and I got him a little bit earlier than the PD. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm just happy. And then I got a not non feature forcer. So, yeah, I, I got Sino. I got this new 5 star character that I really enjoyed a lot. You know, this game style really suits my, my style. You know, I like a lot uh, being like a melee fighter rather than fighting from the distance. And uh, unfortunately, I haven't got Steel Candace, so the the four star. Uh, but let's see. You know, I have some primogens left. Maybe in the next couple of weeks, I might do one or two pulls uh, to see if I can get her. At least, you know, unlock her. But yeah, I got I got the card that I wanted, and uh, I even got like two Shinobus, right? So I got some constellations here. Yeah, I had her like C zero. I don't really like Shinobus against her as well. She's uh, she doesn't do enough damage, she can't heal even that much, so at the end of the day, it's not such a great character, but whatever. And then that's the new one. Here we go. So I'm wondering here, what uh, of the, like the polearm, um, 
that I have, right? You can sue them. I was thinking about like Dragon Spain, but it's just Hydra and Pyro because it's like it's giving elemental mastery, right? So that's why I was thinking about this one. Uh, then I have as well Black Repole, the catch. Yeah, but the catch is just for it's for Raiden, so I not I don't want to move it from there. But I think maybe I could get the Black Repole because it's crit damage, so I can focus like more on crit rate. And then if I get some additional like Elemental Mastery, maybe 100, maybe 150 from like either the artifacts or from other things. I think that could work. Uh, because I don't think there are other good alternatives, right? Other than 5-star weapons. Um, because this one, yeah, this one is not really useful. Because once you use the burst, uh, uh, the damage you do is considered as burst damage. So, um, yeah, and this one is physical damage. And then artifacts, uh, maybe Guild of Dreams. You know, it's 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 a good set for him, considering the uh, extra elemental mastery and then the additional attack and elemental mastery that you can you can get. Um, some other ones. I oh, know this one is uh, Dendro. This one is attack as well, right? One normal attack to the opponent. Um, yeah, sure. This one, no, this doesn't work for him. Actually, to be honest, it could be even uh, Amblet, right? Because of the fact that it increases the elemental burst damage by 25% of energy recharge. So pretty much like Raiden, right? I could, uh, we could build him exactly like Raiden. And I think it could be nice because it's still, it should be able to do more damage. Uh, and also having some more energy recharge, uh, it's not bad. But I don't think he needs that much energy recharge. So yeah, I don't know. Probably the new the new artifact set may be the best for him. I don't really see any any good one. Or you could go like two piece wanderer and two piece uh, gilded, right? To have another 160 elemental mastery just from the artifacts. Um, in terms of build, probably artifacts, it could be nice to have like here probably elemental mastery, here electro damage bonus, and here crit rate or crit damage. And uh, so at least one of the three, the well, last three, to have Elemental Mastery. So you have at least the, the extra 187 Elemental Mastery. Um, so yeah, that I think could, could work nicely. But yeah, I'll try to build him in the next couple of days. And I'm going to give you guys my, my impressions and my thoughts. And that's it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And see ya. Bye-bye.